All right, welcome back to my next touch designer tutorial. And now I'm going to show you um, how to um, make this kind of abstract keyboard or to make a representation of uh, all the keys in touch designer. So with all the keys, I mean all these keys. <laughs> um, so a whole keyboard, basically. So now, as you can see, if I, if I just play this, can see here in Touch Designer it's uh, receiving the MIDI notes and representing them in a nice uh, visual way. And uh, yeah, I can also pause this and um, whoops, <laughs> just uh, play play with my keyboard here. It's a lot of fun for sure. So if I press longer, it's it's becoming white. Uh, yeah, it's just using a feedback loop. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna show you the like this whole network and build it with you. So I'm gonna make a new uh, project here. And for the Ableton part, it's really just a MIDI track with um, yeah. You can either already have played MIDI's or just play around. And I just have a yeah an instrument on there. I'm gonna delete this. You can uh, either just drag that in here. I'm just uh, going to show you how to do that in a second. So here on the palette, on your fresh um, uh, empty project, just uh, select the TD Ableton and drag the TD Ableton package in here. And then when the cross goes away, you know it's uh, connected. You can also see that on the master here, and it says connected. And now I'm just going to dive in here. And just like in the last um, tutorial, we only we're only interested in the Ableton MIDI base here. So I'm gonna drag that over here and drag everything else away. Okay, so on on this base, uh, like on the Ableton MIDI, I'm gonna select the right track, the keys track. So on this one called keys, and um, add a. TDA MIDI device. We press pulse and then you can see it creates this MIDI device like this. Yeah, MIDI device here. So now if I play this, you can see it shows the, um, the, the MIDI notes as channels. All right, so um, it only shows the ones being played now. So that that's also could be a cool effect, but um, I'm gonna turn on this, so like the show default notes channels. So we have all the keys. So all the keys, meaning all these keys. Okay, and um, there is because uh, I plus pressed play with the spacebar. There's this um, control thing here, and sometimes there's other channels as well that we don't want. So I'm gonna use a select chop here to only select the ones we actually need and in this case it's kind of hard to see but um God damn it. <laughs> when you zoom in here you can see the the path of these so I'm just gonna like of the notes so I'm gonna type in that path here so MIDI slash T1 slash TDA MIDI slash CH1 slash note and then underscore and I'm gonna put an asterisk there so it just selects all the ones that have that path okay so now we have only the notes here and um, there they are um, like when I play this you can see the values here are uh, 127 um, that's because that like that's basically the velocity so as you can see here if I press alt uh, then you can see like the the velocity up there, so it's 127. So I select all and turn them down. Then that value is also going to change. Okay. Um, so we want a normalized value because it's kind of weird to work with 127. So I'm gonna normalize this using a math, just like in the last tutorial. Um, and just type 127 here in the range and reset this so now when I play this beautiful melody <laughs> and 
let's play this. You can see it's only going from zero to one. Cool. So um, now, as you can see, this is kind of this list or slices, as it's called, and we want to have it as a graph. So I'm going to use a shuffle for that and just connect this shuffle. It's a bit glitchy. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. Maybe I'm using shuffle wrong. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm not, I'm, my PC is doing a lot uh, at the same time. I guess. I don't know. Anyways, use the method here. Uh, like change the method to sequence all channels. And now when I play this, you can see them being um, represented on a, as a graph. Okay, um, now the next step here is to rename this, because we're going to use uh, this for instancing. So I'm going to change um, the name to size, and um, then connect this to a limit. This is not something you have to do. Uh, if you want your velocities to be represented uh, like actually represent it, then you shouldn't do this. But for this case, I kind of like to do that. So just select this, like go to quantize, select the round value, and then change the value to one. Um, then I'm gonna attach a math here and uh, come back to that later. Attach a merge and a null to that. Let's loop that a bit over here. And uh, yeah, that's the, the basic stuff we need. And now to um, align them in, in a row, we're going to need a, a an X value. So use a pattern for that. And change the type to ramp and set the length to 127, because that's how many keys there are. And um, I'm going to change the channel name to TX. and attach this to a math and change the range to minus 5 and 5 and attach this to a resample. On the resample I'm going to change the time slice to off and the method to new rate new interval and use this uh, as a source input or a reference I mean. Okay. Um, actually maybe this um, I think it makes a difference. And uh, now I'm going to use this and put it into the merge. And then I'm going to uh, start with the actual rendering. So we're going to need a circle for this. Or I'm going to use a circle for this and connect that to a geocomp. Okay. We also need a camera. I'm going to set the Z value to 15. And we and I'm going to use a constant material. Just drag that under, say power material, and then drop a render top in here. Drop a top, and change the resolution to some like I I changed that. You don't need to change that. And um, yes, uh, attach a null, as always. Turn on the the display. Um, put a transform here with alpha to one, so we have a black background turn this on and there we go we have a beautiful circle uh, it's actually not even that beautiful <laughs> uh, anyways so on the geo I'm gonna go to instance and turn instancing on and use this null chop as an instance as the instance source yeah, yeah. now on the translate X um, I use the TX that we created to um, yeah put them into a row as you can see now, and on the scale x, I'm going to use the size that we created. Okay, so that's uh, zero now. Now here on the map, I'm going to map that value from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1. Um, and then play this. All right, so it, it's a bit glitchy, as, as I said, but uh, it works. I don't actually know why it does that glitchy thing, 
But um, yeah, we can still work like this. <laughs> okay, so um, that is the basic setup actually. Now I'm just gonna create that feedback loop to show you how to make the to make this look a bit nicer. So you need to put a null here as well and uh, change the comp to add. Add a feedback here, uh, a transform, and a level. And put that in there. Drag the comp onto the feedback. And on the level, change the opacity to 0.95 or something like that. And on the transform, change the scale to 1.1. All right, cool. Now we can change the color here to pink, maybe. Something like this, turn on blending and drag down the alpha to like 0 0.1. So you get that effect that I showed you in the beginning. Um, yeah, so this is uh, definitely cool. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to play with. I can just uh, play with my keyboard here, jamming hard. And um, yeah, with the glitches, I'm not sure if if it's just my PC, if it's something to do with the shuffle, or if it's just um, a problem with uh, with the, with the TDA button. But it doesn't really bother me, to be honest. Uh, yeah. So thanks a lot for watching, and I see you on the next one.